Fifteen years after the terrible events that we commemorate today, there is not only no sign of justice, but the crimes against Tamil civilians continue. These crimes are a living reality for survivors still living with the trauma, for the mothers and families of the disappeared, and for people whose fundamental right to commemorate with dignity and sadness is denied by the Sri Lankan state. And by the fact that the Tamil homelands are still under the repressive control of overtly sectarian security forces. So the search for truth and justice is more urgent than ever before. Five years ago, on the 10th anniversary of the war, we made a short film for delegates to the 40th uh, uh, meeting of the UN Human Rights Council. It warned the international community that the creation of a sustainable peace in Sri Lanka based on justice, accountability and human rights was urgent and vital if they were to ensure that the terrible events of 2009 could never happen again. How chilling then to see a terrifyingly similar process unveiling in, in, in Gaza today where a right-wing ultranationalist government in Israel is using a shocking crime against humanity and act of terror committed against innocent Jewish civilians as justification for the mass slaughter of tens of thousands of innocent civilian women, men and children in Gaza. For the survivors of the massacre which ended in Mulya Michael 15 years ago, these events bring back unbearable memories. The promise of safe civilian no-fire zones where hundreds of thousands were herded, only to be systematically shelled, starved and denied medical care before the area was overrun by the military and a new no-fire zone was created. The parallels are shocking right down to the portrayal of the incredibly brave Tamil doctors who were desperately trying to care for thousands of terribly injured civilians as supporters of terror. And the ongoing failure of the international community and the Sri Lankan government to ensure justice for the Tamil victims of that process is now being used to justify a similar process in Gaza. Last November, an American think tank, the IPT, which is endorsed by several prominent uh, American politicians, including John Polton, former US uh, uh, ambassador to the UN, published an article. It was called Raja Paksa plan for the total destruction of Hamas, and it argued that Israel should take a page from the Raja Paksa playbook and do the same. It notes approvingly that after the war, the Raja Paksas refused to cooperate with international investigations into their crimes against innocent villains and got away with it. For the mothers of the disappeared in Sri Lanka, for the traumatized survivors, for the up to 70,000 innocents who, according to some UN estimates, died in Sri Lanka for the more than 35,000 who have already died in Gaza. For anyone who cares about human rights and justice, there can be only one call. 